on March 11, 2011. She thought it was four to five minutes. Was that was that your your sense as well? Oh, it was. The magnitude 9 earthquake struck with an epicenter of approximately 72 miles off of Oshika Peninsula. But first, we have to talk about how earthquakes happen. Earth is split up into about 20 pieces called tectonic plates. The 13 main ones have been given names. They move slowly, about a few inches each year, so it's usually hard to detect. Whenever they hit, move apart, or slide past each other, which is a lot of times, an earthquake happens. We usually can feel that movement, but sometimes we can feel them thousands of miles away. The hypocenter is the underground focal point of the earthquake, while the hypocenter is the above ground focal point. There are three types of earthquakes. Convergent boundaries happen when plates slide over each other. This creates a thrust fault and usually creates mountains and hills. The second type is divergent boundaries. Divergent boundaries happen when blades push apart and create rift zones. This usually results in new ocean floors. The final type is transformative boundaries. They slip and slide across each other. This is also called strike slip. Tsunamis occur when earthquakes happen under sea and push large amounts of water onto land. Seismographs are used to measure the level of the earthquake when the pen shakes. The movement creates seismic waves. These waves can travel through Earth and create an earthquake on the other side. Back to Tohoku. This earthquake happened when the Pacific Plate slid under the Continental Plate. The hypocenter was approximately 29 miles underwater. It caused a tsunami leading to the Fukushima disaster. As you can see, the Tohoku region to Tokyo has been impacted the most with a magnitude of about 9. But the whole of Japan have been affected. For economy, 1 billion donations were received by the Japanese Red Cross from countries across the world. Approximately $300 billion was needed to rebuild which is 6% of the economic output for Japan in 2010, making it the costliest natural disaster in history, with a lot of the money coming from people's savings. It shocked the area with approximately 6-8% of Japan's pro production and impacted things like the production of the iPad or automobiles across the world. It destroyed progress of recovering after years of imbalance in the economy, increased their huge debt to twice as much as their output, and destroyed most of the nuclear industry, forcing them to close down 50 reactors and import oil from across the road, which caused trade problems until they decided to restart the nuclear industry in 2015. It shifted the Earth's axis by about 10 to 25 centimeters. It shifted the land and seabed of Japan. The coastal cities and towns had 25 million tons of debris, with water having 1 million tons of debris. It was an estimated three-year recovery. It contaminated the whole of Japan, sending emissions into the air like iodine and across the Pacific Ocean to where even South America was contaminated. The tsunami, which even impacted South America and other places, displaced 340,000 people in the Tohoku region with more across Japan, leaving tens of thousands of families to wander around or stay in low quality shelters broken or intact with fear and hopelessness. They lack necessities like food. More than 1,500 deaths were confirmed, with about 3,000 missing. More than 5,000 aftershocks recorded after created more anxiety and depression. Hundreds of thousands of buildings were collapsed or damaged. The 50-meter tsunami caused the Fukushima Daiichi disaster. It disabled cooling in the reactor and caused a level 7 meltdown. It damaged the DNA of surrounding adults, increased cancer, and led to many children with mutations or radiation, with also higher amounts of disease. The food was damaged across the world. So practically everyone today has a bit of Fukushima in them, harmful or not. Radiation isn't really rising today, but Fukushima is still unlivable. The radiation was so bad it crippled robots tested. Even starfish in Oregon started to lose legs in mutation. Prevention. Base isolation works by having rubber as flexibility, steel that only allows horizontal movement, not destructive up and down shaking. The building is off the ground and away from harm and only shakes at most a little bit, with the isolation doing most of the shaking. It is a good idea to put buildings on shock absorbing thick crust, not on mountains or fault lines because they're the most earthquake prone areas. Hard and flexible ground good for shaking and not breaking is also recommended. Hard rock is also good structure if you attach the houses properly. 